Dr. Simcoe here with another video on how to improve our brains and this is about an amazing protein called brain-derived neurotropic factor. So let's get started. Protein in our brain or brain-derived neurotropic factor or BDNF for short. So brain-derived neurotropic factor also known as BDNF it's a protein that in humans is a member of the family of growth factors. In other words, these are proteins that help our cells grow. Um, and these brain-derived neurotropic factors are what is related to nerve growth factors. In other words, it helps nerves grow and specialize themselves. Uh, BDNF is found in the brain and the peripheral nervous system. Now, BDNF acts on certain nerve cells of the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. It helps to support, like I said before, nerve health and encourages growth and specializing, the specialization of nerves. This is, of course, we talked about before is neurogenesis. And also, uh, it helps to increase synapses. Now, this is a word we will define in the next slide. Now, in the brain, it is active in areas of the brain responsible for learning, memory, higher thinking. Uh, BDNF is also found in the eyes, nerves controlling muscles. The kidneys also are saliva and the prostate. So BDNF, BDNF is extremely important to our nervous system and the rest of our body. Um, now, let's define synapse. Synapse is a point where uh, a nervous impulse, like an electrical impulse, passes from one nerve to another. That's all it is. And we'll talk about what that process, how that process occurs. Now, BN, BDNF is important for long-term memory. And as I said before, it helps to stimulate and control neurogenesis. Now, they did a study on mice born without the ability to make BDNF. Now, these mice suffer from developmental defects in the brain and peripheral nervous system, and they usually die after birth. BDNF seems to play an important role in normal growth and nervous system growth. Now, it's not only capable of initiating synapse formation, but it also supports the regular everyday signaling necessary for stable memory function. So in other words, it just makes things work better and stabilizes it. It sort of supports it, like the support beams on a bridge. Now, we're going to talk about a neurotransmitter, and we're going to talk more about them later, but this is an important one that we need to discuss here. is called GABA. Now, GABA is the your brain's primary inhibitory neurotransmitter. Now, let's talk about what a neurotransmitter is. is. Basically, a neurotransmitter is what goes in that synapse, right? It actually is a substance that in the body and these synapses that carries a signal from one nerve to another, just like handing off a baton. So what the BDNF does is actually reduces the effect of GABA, the inhibitory neurotransmitter. Now it's important to have GABA, but sometimes you can have too much GABA. And what happens is it makes these nerve pathways more exciting. Um, so it, in other words, if you're trying to learn to ride a bicycle, play catch or even a song or how to sing or reading a book or whatever, it actually makes the nerves create pathways that are just easier to run so that you can learn, you know, learning how to ride a bike, it becomes second nature for you. Re learning how to throw a baseball or a football, whatever. Um, it just helps the nerve pathways develop more robustly. Now, it also, BDNF also this goes without saying is that it actually enhances synaptogenesis just like neurogenesis synaptogenesis is the formation of new synapses between the nervous system in other words more synapses the more efficient the nervous the the the, the pathway comes like learning to ride a bike uh that's just simple just the, the the pathways become more hardwired so that it's easier for you to read a book or you know remember words and ride a bike and all that type of stuff now dendrite 
Another definition, dendrite is from, it, it is a short branched extension of a nerve cell, right? along which impulses received from other cells at synapses, like we talked before, are transmitted to the cell body. So the impulse comes along the cell, what we call an axon, which we'll talk more about the cells and the cell pieces of the cells before, and they come and they touch into these dendrites, which then influence the cell body, which then creates another uh, impulse that goes along the axon to the next cell. Now, dendritogenesis is the making of dendrites, and of course, BDNF promotes this as well. It also plays a significant role in, like I said before, and I hate to beat a dead horse, is neurogenesis. It can promote protective pathways to ensure the new nerve cells survival, okay? So if your brain needs new nerve cells, BDNF ensures that it survives. Now, what is the implication of BDNF, this fantastic, amazing protein that does all these good things, is that it increases and becomes more efficient is cognitive function. Now, what is cognitive function? It's all brain activities that lead to knowledge. Cognitive functions includes reasoning, memory, attention, and language. All the things that we do every single day, just talking is also cognitive function. Now, increased visual, physical, and cognitive stimulation all translate into more nerve activity and more synaptic communication. And BDNF is actually increased by being in the natural environment. It's what we're actually made to be, being in the woods, being in the hiking. It actually makes our brains work better by increasing BDNF. Now, there are many diseases associated with BDNF, uh, and various studies have shown that there is links between depression, schizophrenia, uh, compulsive, obsessive compulsive disorder, Alzheimer's, Huntington disease, Rett syndrome, dementia, as well as anorexic disease and bulimia. But unfortunately, as of 2012, clinical trials in which BDNF was delivered into the central nervous system of humans with various diseases such as these had all failed. So giving you BDNF doesn't help, but making it can. So what are some of the things that can influence your brain by increasing the production of BDNF, thus helping you fight off these types of diseases and make your brain work better? Well, these are actually quite easy. One is exercise. Now, endurance exercise helps to increase BDNF by at least two to three hundred percent. So, and extra, this type of exercise is long lived. So, one study showed that men who cycled daily for three months nearly quadrupled their resting BDNF. Now, the cycling, cycling can be anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. Now, strength training also increases BDNF, but it's only for a few minutes. What they found is that moderately intense cardio, like running, is more long-lived. Now, if you don't like running, it doesn't really matter what kind of activity you do as long as your heart rate is increased. What you need is your heart rate needs to go up and it needs to go down. So the interval training that, we, that you've heard about or impulse training or burst training increases your heart rate and then you calm down and it comes down again. That up and down of the heart rate actually causes an increase in the BDNF. Another thing that helps is deep sleep. Now there are four sleep stages and you cycle through them every 90 minutes or so, roughly. And on average, you spend about a third to half of the night in stages three and four, which are the ones that cause deep sleep, restorative sleep. That actually helps BNF, BDNF increase. Meditation is also uh, wonderful because stress is toxic to BDNF and medication <clears throat> increases uh, BDNF dose so specifically in areas of the brain that correlate with pain tolerance, body awareness, awareness of how you think, memory and emotional control, happiness and intelligence. Polyphenols. These are antioxidants which stimulate BDNF and protect your brain from stress. Polyphenols are found in coffee green tea, 
dark chocolate, blueberries, and very colorful vegetables. Coffee fruit extract, which is the fruit that's around the coffee bean, actually has shown to increase BDNF for about 140%. You can get coffee bean extract supplements that will help. Hypoxia. Now, when I say that, we know that your brain needs oxygen, but depriving your brain of oxygen for brief periods of, of time triggers BDNF release. You can do this any time in under two minutes with simply, simple breathing exercises like the Wim Hof method. Sunlight exposure increases BDNF. It improves mood, increases vitamin D production, and decreases your risk of skin cancer. As long as you don't get yourself burned. Now, that's kind of counterintuitive, though. But if you spend about 10 to 20 minutes a day in direct sunlight, don't put the, the uh, sunblock on and leave your sunglasses at home because the UV rays hitting the photoreceptors on your skin and in your eyes help BDNF uh, increase. So those are the things you could do to increase BDNF. What blocks BDNF? Well, three things, really. Stress, sugar, and social isolation. So it pays to be social. So there you have it. A lot to digest and a lot to think about. Um, everything you can do, and you can see it's actually kind of simple, can actually help your brain work better and prevent a lot of those diseases we uh, mentioned in the video. So see you next time.